Di. Guys, Queenie and I have just left Taolian and we are currently in Tan Tong. We just got quarantined for an hour outside the station for god knows what reason. Almost had to be quarantined for one day but thankfully we escaped. But anyway, we're in the small city of Tan Tong which is somewhere in the Tongpei region. And this is one of the most, not one of the most, it is the most communistic city in the entire world. Extremely well known for its scenic landscapes and Korean culture. North Korean to be exact. So without further ado, let's go grab some Korean food and uh, explore the city. Sitting right smack on the border of China and North Korea, it's safe to say no other city is as communistic as this one. Initially, Queenie wasn't interested to come here because she was afraid that there wouldn't be much to do. But I managed to convince her. Because where else can you see North Korea up close and personal? without actually entering the country. You can say it's almost like watching porn. A visual experience of the forbidden fruit. We're currently at a popular food chain in Dantong and this is their most popular dish. Its Korean name is called Samgyetang. Basically herbal chicken. This is one of my favorite dishes. I love soup and I love chicken. We got two flavors, uh, the original Samgyetang and this is the herbal samgyetang, which is more herbaceous. Mm, the original samgyetang, you can taste the ginseng. It's a very distinct flavor. Oh, look at that! There is like glutinous rice, there is ginkgo nut, and there is a berry, goju berry, I think. Mm, look at how flaky the meat is. That bean taste gives it a bit of saltiness. Very nice. Mm. Mm. I prefer the herbal soup because it has more, more intense flavor. Very herbaceous. In the past, only rich aristocrats get to eat this. After that extremely satisfying meal, we went down to the most popular attraction in Dan Dong. I don't know about you guys, but I've always been curious about life over at North Korea. But that curiosity was always never enough for me to actually want to go there. Because if you think about it, right, you never know if it's going to be a one-way ticket. And even if I did, enter the country and you know explore the place it would be filled with all sort of anxiety and worry so i don't want to put myself through all those trouble so because of that we came to the next best thing where we're literally just a stone's throw away or a bridge away from north korea look at that anyone who comes to tan tong would definitely visit these two bridges the new and the old. The old bridge is called the Yalu River Broken Bridge. And as the name suggests, it's a broken bridge. But you know, while we're here, we can literally hear the broadcast from North Korea. I don't know if it's some sort of propaganda game or what, but I'll just keep quiet for a while and see. And let you hear it. I always thought Chinese loudspeaker was like the maximum that that one would go but that's like next level it's like a few kilometers away and yet you still can hear it
The second bridge was constructed some time after the first, and this new bridge is called the China North Korean Friendship Bridge. But strangely, no vehicles or pedestrians are allowed to cross over to either side. What an interesting friendship slash relationship they have. Nicknamed the bridge to nowhere, the first bridge was destroyed during the Korean War and have since been kept in its broken state. While you're on the bridge, all the bullet scars and distorted steel can still be seen till this day. We are now currently walking across the Yalu River Broken Bridge. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say walking across because it just stops halfway. Uh, it feels like it's a bit weird because it's not really a bridge. It feels more like a very expensive pier. But it's pretty exciting because we are approaching North Korea. Can you smell that? The smell of excitement. The smell of a new adventure. The smell of North Korea. Apparently there are a few buildings across the river and they look relatively modern. It is said that the North Koreans put them there just to show the world that they're not as you know, backwards as what the media claim to be. It actually feels a bit eerie because there seems to be no movement at all over at the other side. Like, you don't see anyone or anything. You don't even see birds flying over there. There's no one occupying the building. It's like, look at that ferry's view. It's not even moving. It's, it's just so creepy and but it's quite amazing because like when you're here it's just a bridge two lands and a river separating the land but if you look at look at it on a map there's actually an invisible line the borders built by people you, you can't see anything but there is something there something that prevents people from interacting and being friends and whatnot by the way i was wrong the singing and loud ass background noise ain't from the North Koreans. Hint hint, it's from this side. And boy, it sure is deafening. So we're gonna relieve our eardrums and go across another bridge that would take us to a place called Yue Liang Tao, which means Moon Island. Ooh. But wait! Don't cross the bridge. Huh? There's nothing there. Trust me. We went over, all you get is an apartment that has a Singaporean and Thai influence. Instead, look the other side, because that's where the Dantong Night Market is, filled with lots of little shops, endless kids entertainment, or adult. Hey man, you might want to pull up your pants, let's not forget the dancing grannies too, and food. Yeah baby, loads of food. COVID, what? No one gives a shit here. This open market is just so busy. So many different shops, so many different kind of food. Oh. I really love this street market scene. We don't have this back in Singapore because Singapore's too small. We only have like miniature ones called Pasar Malam. Oh, this is like next level. Barbecue squid is a Tam Tong specialty. If you come to the market, you have to try it. Mm, very good. Oh, oh, and don't you forget those beautiful oysters and scallops too. Look at that. Because Tantong is located near the coast, seafood here is cheap and delicious. They're usually served on a bit of garlic sauce and vermicelli noodles. Absolutely amazing. So if you love night markets like us, then I highly recommend visiting this place. The overall vibe and experience is just amazing. Something you don't get in a big city like Beijing. Based off popular Chinese social media, it's highly recommended to visit the bridges at night because it looks prettier with the lights on. But 
Yeah, seems like the energy shortage in China is real. But over in North Korea, things look even darker. After a good night's rest, we took a cab to visit one of the furthest ends of the Great Wall. Alright guys, we have just arrived at the Hushan Great Wall and this is actually the main highlight of the trip because apparently, this part of the Great Wall extends all the way to the North Korean border so you can expect to have a clearer understanding of life over across the border and apparently at the top, there is supposed to be a hidden path that leads you to a river across North Korea uh, so I'm pretty excited for it so without further ado, let's go! The Hushan Great Wall was named after these twin mountain peaks, which according to legend, resembles two tiger ears when viewed from afar. Hmm, well, I, I can't really see it. Can you? Heaven. From here you can see North Korea. I saw some watchtowers over there. Oh the sky is so nice today. Woo! We're lucky! We have so far visited the Great Wall during spring, early winter and summer I think. And now it's close to summer autumn. Uh, I never thought that I would like the landscape of the Great Wall during this period of time because I thought it would be too hot and too much green but there really isn't too much green for me because this is so beautiful Which seasons do you like the Great Wall the most? Mm. I think this is not bad The boss agrees I don't know why the path to the Great Wall always starts off with these nice beautiful steps and then it morphs into this monstrosity It's not even called steps, look at that Maybe my leg is short but it's just crazy to my shots because it's a bit too hot It's currently not the peak season for travelling so there really isn't anyone on the Great Wall aside from Queenie and I but now that we are here on top of the Great Wall I mean it feels a bit surreal because it's just landscape and some tiny huts so yeah really weird if we continue heading down it feels like we're almost going to be crossing the borders that's that tiny river that separates china from north korea you can see like that's china with a lot of buildings and then that's north korea with just endless views and just mountains there's a bit of beauty to it but a little bit creepy as well Every time we make it down the Great Wall we always find it amazing that we were just over there See that tiny person climbing down? Yeah, that was where we were While we were going up and down the Great Wall we were constantly being attacked by the spider webs so be prepared to yeah, to wipe off some webs Alright guys, we are here When you're coming down from tower number 2 There is apparently two paths for you to take The one on the left Takes you down a rather interesting route according to the map And the one on the right leads you to tower number 1 uh, Which is quite a boring route because you, after you hit there you just go straight out from the park so we're going to take this route now 
Now when I say interesting route, I really mean it. There are no footpaths, just these natural steps or whatever you want to call it. And at times you crawl or hang on for dear life. But you do get sneak peeks over to the North Korean side, which is a plus. She found a cave in the middle of nowhere and she's so excited to see what's inside. Fuck, are you even allowed to enter in? Why? I feel like I see a bat. A bat? Oh, hanging on the top. Oh my god, it's so cool! Can you even see the watchtower from here? We're literally like a river away from North Korea. We finally saw a North Korean across the river. Maybe not one, but at least two. One of them should be a guard. Uh, and another one is, I think he's a farmer or cow herd. This is so cool. Oh my god. Shit, we're damn close. Our final stop in Tantong City is Antong Lao Jie, an indoor food court with an outdoor exterior setting filled with lots of street food and gift shops. This is the place where you'll find every single cuisine available in Tantong. We are now at Antong Lao Jie and it's kind of weird because we are technically indoor but the setting and the design it's all like some sort of old school, outdoor, 90s decor. And it's all lined up with rows and rows of shops selling street food. It mostly sells the same thing over and over again. So you might just want to pick one shop and then just go with it. So guys, we've got two dishes. We've got the prawn balls. And it looks really bouncy. And then we also got another Tantong specialty called Cha Zi. And this is made with corn flour. So I've never had this before, but the lady told me that this is a Tantong specialty, so I have to give it a go. We got a Cha Zi with eggs, uh, and this is the stir-fried version. Uh, I think the popular version, the most popular version is the, the wet version, or the one with soup. It's garlic, spring onions, uh, apparently there's some vinegar in it as well. It tastes a bit like egg noodles, but Slightly denser and bouncier. Mm. Let's try the prawn ball first because I don't want it to get too cold. Whoa. There's a bit of flour mixed with the prawns, but it's not too doughy. It's very bouncy. And then it comes with a garlic soy and chili sauce. So it, that, that sauce really complements everything. After satisfying your belly, you can also head up to the second level to grab some souvenirs. Although the price can vary depending on your race, if you know what I mean. Haha. <laughs> <sighs> anyway guys, that's it for this Tantong adventure. If you haven't watched the video where we went to Ta Lian, then be sure to do so. Getting around Tantong is cheap because Tantong is a third tier city. The taxi fare is extremely affordable. We took a cab to the Great Wall and it only cost about 30 RMB. I also highly recommend that you get the driver's number before you get off because it's very difficult to get a ride back into the city. Queenie and I hitched the ride back. Unless you have no other choice, I really don't recommend that option. You can easily get around the city with the usual rental bikes, but it's really difficult to find them. 
In the meantime, if you've enjoyed what you've watched, then please smash the like button. But alright guys, I guess we'll be heading off. But remember, don't forget to subscribe and stay so thirsty.